Thanks, Jack. I'd like to say I wasn't busy in, in previous years, but I can assure you I was with other things. Um, so like Jack said, my name's Emer. So I'm the HPD manager. So HPD probably means nothing to most people here. So just to, to explain a little bit, I'm the health products distribution manager. So my team looks after a number of different things. So distribution of medicines, cosmetics, and we have a role then for control drugs. Um, so what I hope to talk today about in relation to our control drugs piece is that we process licenses on behalf of the Department of Health. Um, so to give you, I suppose, an idea of who the HPRA are, to give you some context, the application process itself, the form, the license that's generated at the end and the conditions of that, and then some figures hopefully you'll find interesting just around number of licenses issued and some more detail on the 2019 licenses. Um, so the HPRA are a regulatory body, probably know us best for regulating medicines if you're in that sphere, so our mission statement is there. So some of the competencies that we regulate, medicines, medical devices, active substances. So we're based in Dublin, on Earlsford Terrace, so near Stevens Green, and there's about 330 people, roughly, in the organisation. And to give you an idea, I suppose, of where control, control drugs sits, let's say there's, you know, there's HR and accounting and finance and all that, let's say at least 250 people are involved in medicines and medical devices, so that's our predominant function. Um, and much smaller numbers then involved in cosmetics, control drugs and precursor chemicals. And to highlight a difference for control drugs, so we're the, it's called the competent authority, so we're the, the body in Ireland that's responsible for all the competencies you see there except control drugs. Um, so in that field, we process licenses on behalf of the Department of Health. So just to, I suppose, make you aware of that, they're the, the policy maker and the legislator. So, I keep saying we process licenses on behalf of the Department of Health, but what does that mean for you as the applicant? So we're the entity that will issue the application form. We're the entity that you submit the application form to. We review the applications. We generate the license. It gets sent to the Department of Health for sign off, and then we post it back to you. And so we're also the body that you should contact if you've questions about the legislation, or the application process for hemp. Um, we have a mailbox and it's in some of these slides, so you'll see it, it's a control drugs mailbox. And I just thought I'd flag here as well for some of the hemp products where we have a role. Uh, so we are the cosmetics competent authority and as the medicines agency, we have a role to make sure that medicinal claims aren't on products that aren't authorized. So things like to prevent, to cure, to treat a disease, that type of terminology is reserved for authorized medicines in the interest of ensuring that the public can make an informed decision. So we have a role to make sure that products that aren't authorised medicines don't have claims on them like that. So the application process itself. So step one is that you as the applicant should research hemp cultivation. Um, and I'll explain some of the reasons for that uh, as we go through, particularly relating to the licence. But that you should, I suppose, first think about where you want to grow it, where is that field, how much land, and what seeds are you going to use, and where are you going to get them from. So they're kind of the key things to think about before approaching us. And then once you kind of have set, decided on that, then you should contact controldrugs at hbra.ie. Uh, we will send out some preliminary questions, and I suppose that's really our way of checking that everyone has done that research and does understand what they, what they want to do when it comes to hemp cultivation. And then once those questions are answered, we send out an application form which you complete. And I'll go through the application form and maybe some common errors or omissions that we've seen, just to speed up the process on, on both sides. So the application form is complete, it's reviewed internally, we generate the license, signed by the Department of Health, it's posted out to you, so you now have your license to cultivate. You can purchase your seeds in advance of receiving the license, but you can't actually sow them until you receive the license. So it's really important, I suppose, to check the details on the license, because that's 
I suppose, what you're authorised to do that. Without that, you can't cultivate. So just to check the details on the licence, and I'll go through some of the conditions as well. So the application forms, the basics for all forms, to complete all sections, ensure everything's sent in. If something's not applicable to you, write NA. Otherwise, we have to go back to confirm, did you mean to leave that out or not? Um, and to check the plant variety database. So that's where lists, that's the database that's maintained by the European Commission that lists all the seeds that are approved for use um, in hemp cultivation. And I just have gone offline. Uh, put the code in there because it can be a little bit difficult to find on the plant variety database. So some of the errors that we see, and really I kind of am sharing this with a view to speeding up the process for yourselves and for ourselves. So if anything's missing, we have to go back and that obviously generates more work internally, but it also slows down um, you guys receiving your licenses. So this is section one, the application detail, applicant details. I won't go through all the sections, just where we see kind of issues arising. We need the air code to go on the license, so if that's the only thing you leave out, we still have to go back to you, so just to be mindful of that. Um, the email address of the applicant, we've had two different scenarios this year. One where the email address is incorrect, and we try the phone number obviously, but if we don't get through, we can't contact the applicant. Uh, so just be really careful that the email address is correct and that it's something that you monitor. We will always contact you by email first. Uh, the other thing we've had is where people have applied on behalf of maybe two or three farmers, someone has applied on behalf of them. And if their contact details aren't in the application, we can't communicate with you until we go through kind of a series of confirming that the farmers are okay, that, the that you'll communicate on their behalf. So just to put everyone's contact details in there, that you're comfortable with this information being shared with. Section three then, so section two, we, we have no issues on it around um, guard vetting. Section three is the proposed crop locations. So we often don't get the map coordinates or don't get an ordnance survey map. So a lot of you will have received a follow-up question. It's the ITM coordinates that we're looking for. They're on the ordnance survey maps if you provide them. But just to be mindful of, I suppose that's what we require to put on the license. So it's not a, a screenshot of Google um, or the Google coordinates. It's actually the ITM coordinates that, that we, I suppose, need to put on the licenses. The details of the seeds. So again, this comes into your research. They're the variety to be sown and the name and address of the supplier. So it won't even get to review to a reviewer unless these details are there. So I suppose it, this is a, a massive delay if you haven't thought about this piece because it's going through, I suppose, even more rounds of review. So just really important to have thought about that in advance. And I'll give you some details on seed types later in the presentation. So the common question would just be, can you confirm the seed type and seed supplier? Um, so the form is, is generated in conjunction with a number of different stakeholders. So the Department of Ag, would, Agriculture sorry, would also input into the form. Um, and some of the details there you'll see will be shared with the Department of Agriculture. But one detail we've noticed is a lot of people, we can't tell if you're the landowner or not. So that's a question that wasn't in this year, that a lot of you will have got, and that will be in the form next year. And then the security arrangements. So while the form is in conjunction with the Department of Agriculture, the Garda Siakana also were involved in the development of the form. And around security, it's really that the crop isn't visible um, from the, a public right of way, that it's not on the side of the M4 or whatever road it is, that you try and plant it somewhere discreet um, and that it's well sealed. We know obviously the it's, it's just a regular crop, but I suppose it's because of visually what it looks like and um, the Gardaí have decided that the best way to kind of try and manage that is to plant it where it's not visible. So the common question back in this case is just to elaborate on the security arrangements. So to make sure that you're kind of explaining it's not visible from the road, if it's not, and that it's not near a public right away. So to try and pick a piece of land that matches that, um, and we'll also check the maps that that's kind of verified by the detail on the map. 
and the end use of the crop. So this is the last section, I suppose, that we have difficulty with. So usually it, there is an omission of information in this section, uh, predominantly around destruction of waste crop. And it, it may be a little bit confusing, but I suppose we're wondering this part, uh, the Department of Health are looking for information around the end use. So they're wondering if you grow the crop and you only use the seeds, what happens to the rest of the plant? So we accept composting um, as a method of destruction, but it's just that we, we need you to detail in the form that. So we've gone back to a num number of applicants to kind of ask to detail how you dispose of the waste crop. And then the second piece of this that is occasionally missing is the end user contract. So as a, the person who's cultivating it, you might process the plant yourself and produce the end product for the market and that's fine just make sure you detail that in at the start of this section but if you grow the crop and you send on let's say the seeds the mature fiber or the stalk you need to have a contract in place with the person that you're sending it to so that's the current requirement so just to make sure I suppose that if it is sent to an end user that you have a copy of that contract. And just to elaborate a little on the end use of the crop. So we would have communicated with all applicants this year just to be clear, I suppose, for onward supply about what's currently in the legislation. And this comes from the UN conventions, I suppose, that so cannabis is internationally controlled and then nationally we control it in our own legislation. Um, based on, I suppose, those international requirements. So it's the mature stock, the fibre and the seed that can be supplied onwards. And just a reminder again, for the end use of the crop, if they come under the HPA remit, so if it's a cosmetic, um, we have some good information around placing a cosmetic product on the market. We have some information packs, or if there's anything that you, I suppose, are concerned about or you've questions about or you want to know how to be compliant, please do email cosmetics at HBRA. We'd be, we'd be happy to help in that instance. And then secondly, I suppose, as the medicines agency, we have a role to make sure those claims like treating, preventing, curing, any type of disease is restricted to authorised medicines only in the interest of enabling the public to make an informed decision. So the licence itself, so you've, you've applied done the research, you've answered the questions, you've completed the form, we've reviewed it, we've generated the license and issued it. Some of the text on the license is standard text and some it depends on you, the applicant. So this is the information that depends on you, the applicant. Um, so to give you an example of a license, so it'll have your name and address on it. It'll have the seed type, so in this case, Finola is the seed type. It'll have the exact location and the coordinates that you've provided. So that's a made up ITM coordinates. It'll have where the entity that certified your seed. It'll have the uses that you plan to use the crop for and the total land that you plan to grow on. The license can't be amended. So there's no process to amend the license. So once it's issued, if you go out and find field one is flooded, you have to apply again. So you go, I suppose, back to the start. So that's why I think it's really important to do the research in advance. The same with the seeds. If you want to get a different seed type, there's, I suppose there's no change once it's issued. Um, so it's really important that what you get issued is exactly what you need. And when you receive it, to just double check that the details are correct. Um, and if there's any, I suppose, error on our behalf, we'll expedite it. But if it's a case that you've put down the wrong field, it'll go back to the start of the process again. So just to be aware, there's no facility to amend it. Um, and on the back of the license, you'll see some conditions that I just wanted to highlight. So a condition of the license is that the seed search and the seed label will be provided within 21 days. So that means, I suppose, in essence, if you don't provide it, the license is not valid. Um, the other aspect is there is information about records that need to be kept. So you should be keeping records of the date and the areas that you're sowing the crop in, what crop you're sowing, the dates and areas you harvest from, and details of onward supply or use. So important that you do have those records. Um, 
there's different agencies that can request them. So it's ourselves, the Department of Ag, um, and the Gardaí could request those records. So it's important that you are keeping them in, in some form and that you keep them for a minimum of two years. And then again, if there's any thefts or losses that you inform either ourselves or the Gardaí, um, really just so that the local Gardaí have an awareness that there might be this crop being misrepresented. That I think that's kind of the idea behind it. But it is a condition of the licence, so again, important that you do stick to it. So the figures, so that's, I suppose, the, the licence process. So I just wanted to give you some figures I thought m might be interesting. So we definitely have been busy, Jack, when it comes to licences. So you can see kind of a significant increase since 2016. It's been steadily uh, increasing. These figures are as of the 12th of June. Um, and then if we look at the 2019 figures in a little bit more detail, we've received 77 applications. So there's 17 that we are waiting to hear back from. So we've communicated with the applicant. In some cases, these are the email addresses that, aren't, that don't work. Uh, so just to be mindful, if you haven't received a hard copy license, you're not licensed just because you applied. So to follow up if you're one of those 17. The total area that licenses have been granted for is 373 hectares. And the number of licenses with Fenola seed on it is 51. Um, and I've just broken down the seeds. Oh, it, the value obviously didn't come up on this, but you can see from the side, Fenola is, is the most popular. There's 51 licenses issued with Fenola on it. So lice, a, li a hemp cultivation license could have multiple seeds on it, but it could also just have one. So I suppose there's more values here than there is licenses issued because some licenses have multiple. So it's really Fenola seems to be the most popular one, followed by USO 31. Um, so just to summarise, I hope I've kind of given you a clear picture of how the application process works. So why it's important to decide on the details in advance, because once it goes on the licence, it can't be changed. To contact us at the Control Drugs mailbox if, you want, if you're ready to cultivate, if you are ready to complete an application form, um, or if you've queries about the application process. And contact Cosmetics if you queries about cosmetics, definitely, um, they'd be happy to help. And then you complete the application form, check all the details, and ensure you comply with the licence and the conditions of the licence. So I think that we're going to take questions at the end um, in the panel discussion. So if you have anything, or you can catch me at the break. Thank you.